Growing up in Tasmania, it's, it's a small place. Couldn't really go anywhere without bumping into somebody you knew or who knew you. Moved away from Tasmania. Um, thought I'd leave everything behind me and start anew. A lot of bad memories. It's illegal for us to show you this man's face under Tasmanian law, so we're calling him Steve. From a young age, he was in and out of youth detention. The worst time of my life, it changed my view on people, um, humanity, and just, you know, law and stuff. Like, I, I, I knew I was doing wrong, but was I meant to be punished that bad? Like, no, no one does. There's only one juvenile justice facility in Tasmania, a former boys' home, now called the Ashley Youth Detention Centre. For Steve, it was a place of trauma. He alleges he was subject to strip searches, internal cavity searches and sexual assault by one staff member. He says he was traumatised by the sounds of other detainees being assaulted at night. Just by experiencing what I experienced, you could, you know, listen to the cries, you knew what was going on. We yelled out, we told everybody, but it just fell on deaf ears. It was like, are you just criminal children, you know, trying to get out of shit? Go away. These days, Steve enjoys the peace and quiet of his new home away from Tasmania. He says not everyone at Ashley was bad, but what happened there is often in the back of his mind. To me, if you're touching me on the shoulder, my mind flies straight back to the boys' home and what happened after he touched us on the shoulder. It'll never leave me. Like, even my wife today will walk around me to come and speak to me, so... It's, it's something that, it's impacted me, yeah, and it's impacted everyone else around me because they cop it, you know, it's not their fault. Um, I'm worried that one day an old lady's going to walk up behind me and touch me on the shoulder and say, excuse me, and I'm going to turn around and go bang. Sorry. Steve has a family, a job and plenty of interests. But like many of the kids he was at Ashley with, his adult life has been interrupted by periods in jail. I believed I was owed something from what I went through at the boys' home. So I rebelled and I kept rebelling and I'm sad to say I still rebel every now and again, but it's just yeah, something that happened back then that, that affected me and it'll stay with me for the rest of my life and it's what's made me the way I am today. It's quite appalling when you think that a youth detention centre, its main aim should be to rehabilitate um, and clearly the opposite has happened. More than 100 former Ashley detainees have signed onto a class action lodged in the Supreme Court against the state. Steve is a lead plaintiff. The claims date from the 1960s onwards. The allegations cover a gamut of abuses, uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse, serious physical abuse, strip searches, uh, scabies cream, isolation. Tasmania's Commission of Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse has also turned its attention to Ashley. It is inherently unsafe for children and it has defeated every attempt thus far that has been made to make it safer. Rather than it being about monsters who have been able to enter an institution which was otherwise serving the interests of children, here you may find that it's Ashley that's the monster. The Commission of Inquiry has heard horror details from former Ashley detainees about strip searches, isolation practices and physical assaults at various points over the past two decades. One former detainee told the inquiry he'd been raped multiple times and described being forced to perform sexual acts on staff in exchange for his medication. Another told the Commission she'd been put on the contraceptive pill because of the risk of sexual assault from male detainees. Anywhere where you have chronic sexual assault and assault and disrespect 
And any place where you have basic, basically prison-like conditions, then in effect you have a Dondale kind of institution. Criminologist Rob White was part of a team that reviewed Ashley in 2011. He gave evidence at the inquiry. Our findings demonstrated that it was an appalling place. Uh, the physical infrastructure and the social infrastructure was totally unfit for young people and children. His team's report was just one of many to raise concerns about the culture and staffing at Ashley over the past two decades. As shocking as the evidence might be to the community, none of the evidence should come as a surprise to the government. A former consultant at Ashley told the inquiry she reported she'd been told about an historical allegation of child sexual abuse against a staff member. It was quite torturous having to see him and um, work alongside someone with allegations of that nature, knowing that, you know, he's working amongst the most vulnerable children in the state. I found it, um, I've never felt so helpless in my life. There was nothing I could do to reduce the risk. An external incident reviewer told the Commission she often wasn't allowed to speak to children who were alleging abuse, and staff told her they'd had their incident reports changed by the centre. I was identifying similar or identical issues every time, making the same findings making the same recommendations and sending them to where they were supposed to go for action and then nothing would change. There are about 10 children at the Ashley Youth Detention Centre right now. The state government has announced it will close by 2024. Look, there's a lot of work uh, to be done, uh, but it's important that we get it right. It's important that we uh, take the required time the horrors that we're hearing about today make it essential that we close Ashley tomorrow. They should have shut it years ago. Just look at the kids, look what they need, not just lock them up and, and you know, like animals, they're not animals, they're children.